almost unimaginable number of electrons, protons, neutrons, and whatever out there in the universe. We don't even know how big the universe is, James. Uh, we can't see to the edges of the universe. Every, every vibration, every wiggle of every particle in the universe is a discrete event that all of which are in sequence. And so the unimaginable number of these events that form a mosaic or a fabric that we call time, that we set everything significant to us against that background. Back in the summer of 2000, the chief astronomer and director of the U.S. Naval Observatory, the late Tom Van Flandern, and I were over in Italy to give presentations at the annual University of Milano Bergamo Symposium. Both of us were staying up in Bergamo, about an hour's train ride to Milano. One morning, we sat together on the train down to Milano and talked about time. So Tom is the thinker that really kick-started me to deal philosophically with this subject. He said... He thinks about it along these lines. He asked me to imagine there was nothing except empty space with just a faucet in it. The faucet drips. The faucet drips again. So he asked me how much time there was between the drips. And I immediately saw, and we agreed, that the question was unanswerable. There was nothing that we could say. Then he asked me to visualize a second dripping faucet, one that drips 60 times for every time the first faucet drips. Now what can we say? Well, we can now remark about the ratio being 60 to 1 on a regular basis. And then we can add a third faucet that drips 60 times for every time the second faucet drips. So now we can remark not only about the mathematical ratios, but we can now talk about cycles of events with, within cycles of events and regularity in their relationships. Okay, well, the planets revolve uh, around their central luminaries on a fairly regular cyclical basis, right? That's the basis for our day and night. The annual solar cycle of 365 and a quarter days for the year. Another way of thinking about time is this. Generally, when we heat a chemical reaction, it happens faster, right? Yes. Do we think that the heat is evaporating or destroying time? No, we don't think that. Obviously, the heat is just increasing the rate of molecular collisions or interaction events. The, the, the big symbol T in any physical equation stands for the number of events during that duration. That makes sense to okay. me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, All yeah, right. with our, we try, we try to um, quantify, like you're saying, but that's based on those events, but it has to be in relation to other events or it's, there's no way to, yes. to gauge. We're on the yes. same we're on the same page, but I love this stuff. Um, yeah. So, so let me quickly add uh, something about Einstein making space and time uh, relative uh, and developing what's called space time. What utter nonsense! Space is just a mathematical construct, and time is. The sequence of events, they can, neither one can be reified. The universe cannot be infinite in size. It must be finite, and instead of uh, indefinite space projected out along the Cartesian coordinates, the universe has a certain finite volume to it. Poof! There goes Einstein's theories of relativity. They're useful. In, in many cases, but they're not ultimately correct. And Einstein never accepted or became comfortable with his own thinking. Well, and that's, you know, again, I think that comes down to, you know, as far as experimentation and application of things, that's, 
the best way that people feel that they can uh, justify or understand what they're looking at in in some terms, you know, when we were talking about, um, you know, fusion and the atomic, the atomic bomb and things like that. It's all mathematical. And uh, Einstein was, was a a genius, uh, but he had a high level of integrity and uh, he always was uncomfortable with his own thinking, and we feel like we understand the mistake that he made in positing his relativity theories. An interesting sidelight to all of this is that I can't watch and enjoy movies anymore that deals with time travel because such a thing violates my logic and reasoning on such a fundamental uh, level. Just just imagine reality if if a uh, sequence could be scrambled or reversed. Yeah. Would 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 there, would there be any certainty or security at all when? Anything that ever developed could always be undone by reversing the sequence. Is that even remotely uh, imaginable? It, it doesn't totally make sense when you put it that way. And I think um, nope, nope. Sequence is a non-material or spiritual foundational reality, and our whole human experience and everything depends upon sequence being inviolate yeah that makes sense to me when you put it that way um okay when it comes thank you yeah yeah so one of the things that um may be known or quantified or maybe unknown is you know how many ma- like major waves of cataclysm has the earth endure- endured um and is that uh, as a result of um I mean, you talked about the Grand Canyon, for for instance. Um, that that would have been, you know, in the EU model from discharge from from another planet. Can we get into um, kind you of bet. that that concept? And also, like, do we do we know how many? And is that is is there kind of more coming? Let me start off by using my favorite phrase, or at least my most common phrase. I don't know. In my opinion, initially the earth cooled and formed a crust. This crust is relatively thin, 15 to 30 miles, thinner than an onion skin on an onion by comparison, like a huge water balloon. The ocean trenches or basins bear the earmarks of EDM electrical discharge machining scratches, and I can see them to be EDM'd out while the Earth was still in proximity to its parent Saturn. Uh, So this was maybe uh, a cataclysm before the Earth was populated to form the ocean basin. And then uh, somewhere along the line, you know, a vast amount of water was added to uh, the earth that filled the ocean basins and uh, a long sequence of life development uh, phases took place. And the life development uh, sequence actually uh, terraformed the earth and turned it into a a biologically supportable, uh, you know, a life support system. Now, just starting arbitrarily at a point in time when the Earth was in uh, axial alignment with Mars, Venus, and Saturn, then the, the great deluge or catastrophe that we have to deal with historically in in the various uh, ancient records, the Old Testament and other scriptures, called the flood. That was when we uh, that that alignment broke up, and we spiraled in to take a, a new uh, orbit around the you know our our current sun. But 
but before 